Welcome to Illuminati Silver. We tell you the truth about silver. Today is Friday the 14th of August 2020 and yesterday we published a video entitled Gold and Silver Regain Yesterday's Losses and More where we highlighted that the falls in gold and silver on Wednesday were more than made up for on Thursday but not all of the falls achieved on Tuesday at least not so far. Gold was standing at $1,921 and silver $2,597. And we have predicted that a further rise would be likely today, not least because the correction may have been a little overdone, and that there are some significant economic data still to be announced. Well, at the time of writing this podcast, which is 1445 GMT plus one, Gold has indeed risen to $1,949, though it has pulled back from today's high of $1,966. And silver stands at $27.07, having again been higher today at $27.74. By the end of the day, they may pull back even slightly more, but we do not think that the figures will be grossly different. But of course, there are still quite a few hours before the end of the day. Now tomorrow, of course, we shall be publishing our weekly update, but we thought we would share with you an article, well, what is called an opinion article, published in this week's edition of Bloomberg Business Week magazine. Now, when the article was originally written, it was about just over a week ago, but it's certainly worth listening to, as it hopefully puts into perspective something we were saying really since around the middle of last year that at last professional advisors are now beginning to recommend gold for an investment portfolio, whereas previously most did not. The difference with this one is that the writers potentially suggesting that many investors should replace their entire bond holdings with gold, or at least a significant proportion of them. I shall read that article to you now and then comment thereafter. Article published in Bloomberg Business Week, dated August 10th, 2020. Headline Stocks and Gold Equals the New 6040? Question mark by Shuli Wren, a columnist for Bloomberg Opinion. Quote In the past decade, a traditional 6040 portfolio of stocks and bonds, as represented by the SP 500 index, and long-term government bonds was a winner. But with US bond yields moving towards zero or even negative territory, it may be time to rethink that mix. One thought, how about swapping out some bonds for gold? In normal times, bonds serve as a hedge against falling stock prices because they tend to rise in value when equities slump in an economic downturn. But this relationship starts to break down when government bond yields stay down for long periods, especially when they're low as a result of central bank policy. Moreover, we may be on the brink of an inflationary period, which would be bad for both stocks and bonds. The Federal Reserve has been flooding the financial system with cash. In just three months, Assets held by the Fed ballooned by two-thirds to almost $7 trillion, from $4.2 trillion in early March. Both monetary and fiscal stimulus have been larger than they were during the financial crisis. People are clearly worried. Since May, polls conducted by the Conference Board show that the consumers' inflationary expectations have shot up to above 6% from about 4.5% before the COVID-19 outbreak. Meanwhile, the future inflation rate implied by relative prices in the Treasury market has been steadily creeping up. Gold can be a useful hedge against equity risk at times like this, according to Goldman Sachs Group Inc. History shows that gold outperformed stocks by a big margin when inflation went above its long-term trend. Gold is experiencing a record-breaking rally, with futures prices briefly touching $2,000 an ounce on July 31st. In the COVID-19 era of easy money and low interest rates, 
Goldman estimates the price could rise even to $3,000. All it would take, the bank says, is for inflation to hit 4.5% or stay at a lower rate such as 3.5% for a sustained period. We've grown so accustomed to stability in the cost of living that any uptick would send traders scrambling for gold's protection. The 60-40 formula was conceived when bonds and stocks were still free market agents. But now that the Fed is buying up everything, from mortgage-backed securities to recently downgraded corporate debt, bonds have lost their usefulness as a hedge against stocks. A little gold might fill the gap. Whatever you may think of Shuli Ren's comments, there is no doubt that the dollar index is still weak, currently down 0.2 at 93.1. And some economists and forecasters are predicting that they could see the dollar not only fall below 90, but potentially go as low as 87 over the coming months. And this, if it does happen, will certainly act as a significant tailwind for both gold and silver and other commodities priced in dollars. Now, before we go, it's worth mentioning that retail sales have been announced for July at 1.2%, lower than expectations, which were closer to 2%, and much lower than the 8.4% seen in June. Productivity for quarter two is up, though, compared with quarter one, and industrial production for July shows a positive 3%, again lower than June's 5.7%, but marginally higher than expectations, which were closer to 2.7%. So a slightly mixed bag, with next month's figures, in our view, showing whether the recovery has stalled or not as a result of the coronavirus pandemic. Now, we are still positive gold and silver for the months ahead, Nowhere near as bullish as the pumpers, but as we have stated for well over a year, this will be the decade for precious metal prices, and we can expect prices to grind higher with a flurry of a rise, then a pullback, then some consolidation, then rinse and repeat. Of course, as ever, black swans and a changing political agenda or environment can affect both positively and negatively these prices, and certainly can affect the best and detailed of forecasts. And this, quite frankly, is what makes investments such an exciting, though sometimes terrifying, hobby or activity. Unless, of course, you take the medium to long-term perspective, which is something we constantly suggest. Thank you so much for listening. Do share your views. And if you haven't already done so, please subscribe to the channel and press the bell sign so that you're notified of our videos as and when they are published. Finally, before we close this video podcast, we would appreciate it if you would make some comments in the section below as to what subjects you would like the Richard and Greg channel to discuss, obviously outside of the precious metal investing area. Both I and Greg have a wide experience of subject matter, and an indication from you would make our videos more relevant, as currently less than 20% who've subscribed to that channel are actually listening to the videos that we are producing, and it is our aim to make them as relevant as possible. Thank you. We hope you have found this video interesting and informative, and if so, please give it a thumbs up and share it on social media. Please ensure that you have subscribed to our channel and press the bell sign so that you are notified of any future videos. Also kindly visit our website at illuminatisilver.com, and if you haven't already done so, Please subscribe either as a free or paying member for regular email updates and offers. Disclaimer. 
Illuminati's silver owners come from a background of banking, international wealth management and economics. Having now retired from these worlds, we are not qualified to give investment advice. Therefore, this and other productions must not be deemed to be giving such advice and merely represent the personal views of its owners. Thank you.